out of the 10 defining video games on the Amiga home computer. When you close your eyes and think about point and click adventure games, one game comes to mind and that is The Secret of Monkey Island. This was a classic game that my friends conversed over so much back in the 90s. And even today, looking at it, playing it, feeling it, listening to it, still feels as fresh and familiar as it did back in the early 90s. So I would suggest that you buckle up your shiny shoes. Guybrush Threepwood is your main protagonist. Let's go and hunt, let's go and converse, let's go and chat, let's have some laughs, let's play The Secret of Monkey Island. Lemmings is another tank mouse extravaganza that helped to define not just the Amiga, but many home consoles as well as computers. This one involves lots of weird lemmings, which are actually quite cute if you think about it and zoom in on them. But you've got to kind of work together here and utilise the different lemmings powers and abilities in order to progress and save as many lemmings as possible. It can be fast in places, it can be fraught, it can be stressful, but wow is it fun. Sensible Soccer. We often joke about how unpopular FIFA games are these days, but this is by no means a FIFA game, oh no. This is a top-down basic football game. You can barely see the ball, you literally have to squint to look at the screen. There was something so basic but so effective about Sensible Soccer that made it appeal to me and the likes of many of you watching this episode. It's hard to imagine the Amiga without talking about Sensible Soccer, a little bit like the previous two games that we've mentioned, but boy, again, I could sit and play this for absolutely hours. Do you remember having conversations back in the 90s about games that had really good graphics? Or maybe a game was coming out and you say to your friend, mate, have you seen the graphics on this game? Well, let me tell you, Another World was one of those games that you said wow to. Graphically stunning. As you can see, this game came out in the early 90s and for even the lowest powered Amiga 500s, this was able to run like smooth, creamy butter, melting all over your toast. Now don't just sit there and watch and listen to this and let me tell you how good it is. But all over the internet you will find 10 out of 10 or 5 out of 5 reviews everywhere you go. There's no denying that this was one of the games that really helped shape the Amiga even though it was originally developed for the Atari ST. If you haven't got a sweet tooth now, maybe you will after watching this footage from Zool because this was apparently a Sonic the Hedgehog rival back in the day and whilst Zool didn't live up to the, I guess, the mastermind that Sonic the Hedgehog lived up to, there's no denying that this was a fun, fast and furious game and not to mention I loved the product placement, you can see here, chopper chops and just all of these sweets that everybody just used to love as a kid. I mean, Sonic doesn't have Smarties and candy canes splattered all around Green Hill Zone. No, there's no match for Sonic here. Zool is an absolute classic. Easy on the eye, fast and furious, and just you can pick it up in 2022 and love it. Now, if sensible soccer wasn't your thing, perhaps Speedball 2 was. The basic premise is the same, but you utilise your hands. It's a little bit more brutal and there's a hell of a lot more going on on screen and I will say that the ball or marble, whatever it is, is a hell of a lot easier to see. Now back in the day as a little girl, I couldn't help but wonder, are these multiple Robocop machines running around the screen? So for me, there's a little bit of nostalgia within nostalgia here because when I play this, I think about Robocop and it's easy to see why. Pang. Shoot balls. Balls split. Shoot more balls. Avoid crabs. Shoot more balls. Yeah, you get the premise. How fun is this? And boy does it look awesome. The pixels look fantastic and honestly I could sink about five hours of my day into this easily. Jimmy White's Whirlwind Snooker. Never in a million years would I think that I'd be talking about a snooker game and recommending how good it was in propelling a console or home computer, but this really did. 
there's something about it that just feels very relaxing and I'll say to this day there's not a lot of pool or snooker games whether it on mobile or console that have topped this game. The Mega Drive had micro machines, the SNES had micro machines, but the mighty Amiga had supercars. It is the classic top down formula that we all knew and grew to love. It's very frantic and can be very difficult in places, but that definitely adds to the challenge being able to customize your cars and upgrade and have fun with some couch co op. Syndicate, in my opinion, felt really special and like no other Amiga game back in the day. It felt more like a PC game or rather I was playing an actual PC port of a game on an Amiga. There was so much to it, being able to control up to a four person team and just navigate around this awesome isometric detailed world. It was fantastic. Now of course Syndicate was developed for the PC and it was developed for consoles, but I think this just made the Amiga feel for me like a PC back in the day. Now it's time to switch to some hardcore Batman action. Batman the movie, being able to drive and fly various vehicles from the gorgeous Batcave or maybe we're just dropping down shooting enemies and navigating our way through the awesome platforming elements of this game. What's not to like? We've got a high score along the bottom, we've got gorgeous pixels, I mean this oozes classic 90s charm and we can play it on the Amiga and enjoy it as richly as it was in the early 90s bit of a cop out here because I'm going to talk about Alien Breed as a series. <sighs> Quite possibly one of the most memorable Amiga games for me ever. If you're familiar with Aliens, you can expect a basic top-down premise of Aliens. We navigate these narrow co corridors, shooting xenomorphs, collecting keys. It's action-packed, it's phenomenal, it's pacey, it's fantastic. Super Frog is everything that works well in a platformer. You have a odd looking protagonist, lots of coins to collect, lots of places to explore. You can jump really high, you can run really fast, you can even shoot your eye. That's right, there's a gorgeous eclectic nature about Super Frog, one that made me smile thoroughly back in the day. And being able to leap so high, just something about it just made you feel invincible as that little frog back in the day. But it's 2022 now, and I love this little frog more than ever. Just like lemmings, but on steroids. That's right, Worms the director's cut. There's many more layers of coolness to see here and weapons and things to shoot and everyone has their own name and it just looks, sounds and feels flipping fantastic. Yay for being able to play Worms on the Amiga home computer. The Amiga had some games with puzzles in and teleportation and yeah really cool stuff like that yeah that's right we're talking about flashback still looks stunning doesn't it another one of those games that you'd sit and discuss with your friends hey have you seen that game it looks amazing this is not super metroid and this is not mega man this is torican it looks stunning and you don't have to play this from left to right you can go right to left you can go up and down i really liked the versatility of being able to feel that you could go anywhere you wanted to go in this and it just wowed me back when i first played it in my friend matt's house not every good game was produced and developed by Team 17 back in the Amiga days because Psygnosis gave us Shadow of the Beast. Shadow of the Beast for me felt like a better version of Altered Beast and even the gorgeous parallax scrolling effect in the background absolutely mesmerised me as a little girl. In fact, I actually forgot back in the day that I was playing this on an Amiga. I was so hooked on, I guess, console gaming that I forgot the power of what the Amiga could really do. And for me, this was draw dropping. So there we go. And this is a weird one because I've done so many episodes recently where I've looked at either upcoming games or recently released games 
over on the Amiga home computer, but these stem back right into the 90s. And for me, that was the bulk of my childhood. That's where my predominant happy memories are in regards video games, the 8 bits coming out of that into the 16 bit and that monumental leap into 32 bit and, and so on and so forth. But the Amiga home computer will always be fond. I never had one growing up. I was always round at my friends, couch co-oping, sitting on the bunk beds, watching my friends copy games, playing games, talking about games, floppy disks everywhere. I'm pretty sure you know exactly what I'm talking about because that is why you clicked this video for absolute Amiga nostalgia. And if you found any pleasure in this episode whatsoever, all I would ask is that you subscribe, you stay subscribed and you enjoy more Amiga content by clicking one of the over 40 episodes which will be pinned in the cards and in the description. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this episode. Have a beautiful day. My name is Gemma. Take care and I'll see you soon. I need a few seconds of your time to tell you about channel memberships. If you guys want to become a channel member, click join from the main page or the second link in the description. There are three tiers, all with different perks for you if you want to become a team member. Thanks for your time. Let's continue with the video.